podcast bites. When you're using a peptide for a specific reason, let's say you're using CMAX for cognition, uh, is there any need to cycle these? Kind of similar to like uh, hormones, for example. Do you develop tolerance? Do you need to go like eight weeks on, four weeks off? Or, you know, if you're using BPC-157 for your gut, uh, you know, orally, is it something you'd take for a little bit of time and then you need to stop? Or can you kind of like, let's say, fish oil, just take something like this every day? Yeah, um, yeah. Unless you overdose and saturate in a ridiculous, uh, in a ridiculous matter, the, the the receptors. But no, usually no. Uh, there is no. Uh, you can take for a long, long times. Uh, the effect with, will still be there. And uh, yeah, no problem. Okay. Now, now what? Now though, what about like if? If you didn't want to be in a state of constant anabolism or you didn't want to inhibit cellular autophagy or you wanted more of a longevity effect and you were using something like, you know, I, I think probably the guy you heard me interview was Jay Campbell and he and I were talking about tessamorelin or a lot of these these IGF type of compounds. Wouldn't you want to cycle something like that so you aren't just in a state of constant growth year round for, you know, just for longevity purposes? Yeah, again, it depends. Uh Tessamorelin is a funny t- – I've been asked uh, after that podcast, I've been asked if we could sell it, but uh, we actually – the biochemist I work with is under contract with the company that patented and makes Tessamorelin. So that's the only peptide my company cannot make because of that. <laughs> Wait, so, so your company makes peptides as well? Oh, but of course. What's the name of your company? Uh, CanLab.net. Canlab.net. Yeah, that that's the web store, but it's um, Canlab Research. Okay, Canlab Research. I'm I'm keeping show notes by the way. If there's you listening in, just go to bengreenfieldfitness.com/slash/peptidepodcast. That's bengreenfieldfitness.com/slash/peptidepodcast, and and I'll link to a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today. Okay, so so some of these would need to be cycled, but some of them, like say BPC one fifty seven, or some of the ones that aren't necessarily super growth promoting, those could be uh, th- those those could be used on a daily basis, for example. Yeah, but yeah, even BPC, depending how many times a day, because the the the, the effect lasts about six hours. So if you inject only once a day. Well, you have your cycling there because you have six hours, you get the effect, and 18 hours, you don't. So you have a a daily cycle of the BPC. TB500, the effect lasts between 10 and 15 days. Now, I'm not talking about the life of the peptide. Uh, the peptide, you know, you have uh, enzymes in the blood that uh, break down peptides. They don't last for even TB500, that the, 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 the metabolic cascade it creates for repair continues for 10, 15. It's like training. You train for an hour, but you build muscle. The, the mTOR goes on for hours and days. So it's the same thing with peptides. And that's why, uh, I, I don't know if I can say that on the podcast, but you know they say TB500 is tested by uh, the sport, some sports federations. But basically, a uh, bit of information here, after 12 hours, you cannot detect TB500, it's all gone. The effect will continue, though. So it would, and and you don't need to inject because of that every day. So you you would be need to be very unlucky to be tested within 10, 12 hours of using it. Yeah, not that we would endorse cheating or, or breaking the, the in, in-season competition regulations. But and from what I understand, many peptides are banned by you know the World Anti-Doping Association and USADA and a lot of these governing sport bodies. But some, I believe, still are legal, such as, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but like BPC-157, for example. Mm, it's not. Uh, if you read well the directives, they they include without naming it BPC five hundred. I think it goes like any peptide that uh, increase repair and blah blah blah. So they don't name it, but uh, if you were taking it and if they would test for it and see it, 
yeah, that would yeah. disqualify you. Okay. Yeah, I, I do know a lot of the the growth hormone ones like epimoralin and tesamoralin yeah. and, and GHRP and many of these others. They're they're definitely banned. But I I was under the impression that there were still some that that were not. So I guess you know probably the best best step. And I'll, I'll tell you what I use a lot of times with my athletes and myself is you just go to globaldro.com. Uh, that's that's just like it sounds globaldro.com, and you can do a search for for which type of compounds or supplements that you're taking would be legal versus versus not. Avocado, motherfucker.